It was a long journey, but it was worth it. During which, I remembered how much the calm and breezy moors of the Eye of Orion could truly calm you down when you were stressed. It had been a while since I was last here. There had been a lot going on in my busy life, which meant I couldn't find any time to come back until now. The last time I was truly here, I was with three very good friends of mine. Roxy Taylor, Henry Woodman, and Julia. Julia Breslin. Back when times were just a little bit simpler to understand. A long time ago. Still, life moved on. Especially now. That was because of a couple of things that had happened to me recently. I lost one of my friends to a fight in which he didn't even need to be there for. Another one had banished me when they saw that my life had caused them more pain and misery and the other... Well, it was a sore subject and I don't want to discuss it. Still, I think the fact that I'd stopped being the doctor at this point probably worked out for the best. I don't think it would have been the right time to go gallivanting to deal with someone or something on a different planet, or dealing with something important in a different universe at that point. It would have been too soon to do any of that. So, the Eye of the Ram was probably the best place to go at that point. Especially when it took me about seven attempts to get there in the first place. Still, it was the best place for me now. Especially as the walk from the Inner Moors to the TARDIS took my mind off most things. Though, that could be due to the bombardment of positive ions that the place had. It was named the most tranquil place in the universe for a reason. And now that was going to stop as I was getting nearer to the TARDIS. I opened the doors and walked into the threshold leading to the console room. The doors closed behind me as I walked further in. I think after a long trek through the Eye of Orion, I wanted to go somewhere else. Somewhere a little less complicated. Unfortunately, what happened afterwards made everything else seem a lot more complicated in hindsight. I operated the numerous controls with the good idea of just leaving as soon as possible to be somewhere else. I hoped that this wouldn't take more than a minute. I also hoped that this wouldn't turn into a therapy session. Because usually, therapy sessions never work. In my case anyway. I turned out to be the therapist in question. And that usually ended up not working. Everything went well with the controls as I began to finish operating on them. Making sure to leave the handbrake to last. I was hoping to leave as soon as I pulled it, but instead, what happened turned out to have the engines shut down and the power turned off. At first, I did think it would have been a simple, faulty power cut to the TARDIS because of the Eye of Orion, which I realised immediately could not have happened, because nothing on the Eye of Orion could have drained the power. Something was afoot, and it wasn't anything nice. Perhaps using the sonic screwdriver would put the power back on and maybe give it a little recharge. So I grabbed my sonic screwdriver from my pocket in my trusty cravat and I aimed it at the console. From pressing the screwdriver, hopefully it would allow the power to come back on. It didn't. Instead, the console reacted badly. Like someone had fired a laser and had broken the temple grace at it. And it began to explode around me. I did not expect this reaction at all. And neither was the next. In some cases of the TARDIS exploding, it would either keep the occupants safe by turning the console off, meaning that I would have had to go outside, or keeping the occupant inside by reversing time to the moment where the occupant would be most safe. In the brief moments after the explosion, I had expected the former, but I had instead experienced the latter. I was sent backwards in time, a minute back to where I had entered the TARDIS doors. However, instead of losing the experience of the recent explosion, I had kept the memories. I wouldn't realise this until after I'd operated on the console for a second time. Pulling the handbrake, allowing the power to go off for a second time. 
I now had the freedom to do anything to get the power back on. But I started to remember the list I had used in my head. First was the screwdriver, which meant I couldn't use it anymore. Perhaps I could turn the power back on by something underneath the console. Maybe if I refitted a wire to another section of the console, it would trigger something that would turn it back on. It wasn't the best idea, but it was worth a try. I rushed over to my chair in the room to drag the box out underneath. Oh, the many questions by my friends about why it was under there. And the many excuses I had, such as needing it to reach an all-important book in my library. No, it was to fix the console. What silly reasons I had to think up to hide it from everyone else. I opened it up to find all manners of things inside. Another sonic screwdriver, which I obviously couldn't use. But a non-sonic screwdriver. I suppose it was worth a shot. I rushed back over to the console, going underneath to unscrew the screws on the panel on the other side of the console. Screws dropped and I hesitated, wondering if the explosion would happen again. It didn't, as the panel fell with the wires amassing around the space around me. Now, I didn't need to find a certain wire, just any wire that I could take out and then reconnect again. So I chose the first one in front of me and hoped for the best. Unplugging it, unplugging another one, and plugging the first one into the other slot and vice versa. Now that should have worked. The console decided to blow up in my face again. This time, I had less time to brace, due to being at the epicenter of the explosion. A shame. I would have liked a couple more seconds. But if this reset had happened once, it could happen again. I just had to wait it through, and I was back where I was, in the TARDIS. The door opened, and then closed. Now I had to wonder how long this loop would go on for. I had experienced loops that lasted seconds, minutes, or hours in my lifetime. Never days or weeks. Usually by the time the loop would have reached a couple of hours, I would have usually fixed it by that point. At this point, the loop was only about five minutes in length overall. So I had a long way to go until it reached the point of hours. But by then I was wondering how long it would take before I went mad. It used to not take long back when I was younger in age, but nowadays it would just have to depend on the situation. The one I was in at the moment, though, child's play. The power switched off, and there I was, back in the freedom period. Checking with the list in my head, I tried the sonic screwdriver and I tried the wires, but what was next on the list? I had to think for a moment. There were many ways out of this, until I thought of my next one. Using the other controls because it had the handbrake being the cutoff point, couldn't it? Well, if this didn't work, I knew I had another try coming up. Though which one to use? The dimensional stabilizer? The vector tracker? Maybe I'd kept the vortex loop on by mistake. I checked for the last one by walking around the console. And no, it wasn't left on by mistake. Good. Just needed to check. But perhaps that would be the control to turn on. Keep the vortex loop on. That would be a great idea. I had to take the chance, and so I rushed over to the control, left it on, and then used the handbrake and hoped for the best. Except it wasn't. The explosion still happened, and I still faced it, just like the last time. I only had a brief couple of seconds before the next loop, because I was standing right by the console. I started to think of something, but I didn't have enough time before the next loop, so I had to wait until everything came back. Which it did, momentarily. And then I had that last thought, interrupted by the blast, which was continued in my head. If the TARDIS exploded because I kept going near the console, would it still explode if I went nowhere near the console and had, instead, went to the doors? Hmm, a good idea. So I thought I would try that when the loop finishes, which was in the next few seconds. With it ending, I made my way towards the doors, hoping that they would lead back to the outside of the moors. However, I wish I'd remembered something as I opened the doors. Because as I opened it, 
I encountered a wall. The same wall that the TARDIS puts up when the defences have gone off. Which means I couldn't get back to the moors. Because the console had detected a change. It had decided to explode again. Which meant I was going to face the loop again. Which by the fourth time was really getting repetitive. I let out an audible sigh as the explosion succumbed to me. I had to change my tactics. No more staying inside of this room. I had to leave it and go further into my ship and find a way to break the loop. Right, that's my plan sorted. Time for the next loop. Loop number five. Let's go. The loop began again. The doors were opened and the console operated on. The power switched off. It was now time to run. And off I went through the corridors, running as fast as I could, because if I stopped, I would have to endure another loop. Despite the fact I have so many ideas still stuck in my head, I really just don't want to use them when the loop happened again. I ran along the corridor until I found the nearest door and closed it. I braced for impact of the explosion, but it didn't happen for once. However, I was stuck inside the library, which would have been fine on any other day but not today. Unless I had a book that could fix all of this, which I knew didn't exist, so it was worth us trying to find one. I was stuck. I think for the first time in a long, long while, I was truly stuck in one room and I couldn't get out without having to do this all over again. Especially when leaving the room through the way I came meant another death. There's another door at the end of the room. Well, opening it caused the explosion to occur. I guess I could find out. Maybe I wasn't stuck after all. So I walked over from the first door to the second. I had to make sure that I wouldn't knock over anything. Despite none of the books being connected to the console, it was just that I didn't want to deal with any of the mess that would be involved. Sometimes, one book on the floor could be the bane of my existence to clean up. But I had to reach the door. And open it to find a way out of the room so I could get closer in except one of the books did fall over. But instead of it falling to the ground with a thump, it shattered like glass. The TARDIS was now trying to do anything to get me out of the safer rooms and back into danger. Another book shattered to the ground, followed by another one. I had to get out of there. Too much glass would keep me from the door. I was almost there, but so was the amount of books shattering to the floor. I had my hand reach so far and so close to the door handle. But then my hand was cut by one of the books falling down in front of me. I had to ignore the cut and get to the handle, which I did with some grandeur. Opening it led me to the next room, which was a relief for once. I took a couple of seconds to regain some of my breath. During those couple of seconds, I looked at my cut hand, and it wasn't cut anymore. It didn't cause me to think of all the theories of how it could have disappeared in seconds but it was peculiar. Unlike the room I was standing in. The room being what I entitled as the room of clocks. I used to have a grandfather clock in the console room, just as a reminder of how time flowed through the day. But when the master had started using grandfather clocks as a basis for his escape plans, I had to move them away from the console room. It was best not to have them where he could find one to escape in despite the fact that none of them had even had time travel capabilities. I looked at one, and it read quarter past five. The arm that operated the seconds kept going and going. And then I looked closer in. The clock was stuck at quarter past five, and the ticking, which before was only small in volume beforehand, it was getting louder and louder. And then... The clock glass behind me shattered. I had to start moving again, and the clocks exploded behind me. I ran at a good enough pace that none of the ones in front of me shattered, but the ones that were behind did. There had to be a point where all this running around would send me somewhere useful. But then, I suppose every time I ran through those corridors, I would always keep thinking that they would let me end up somewhere. Luckily, there was another door in front of me, though, which meant I could finally end up somewhere. I had to reach it before the clocks would. I got to the door 
and opened it with me pushing through. It got closed as soon as I entered the next room. I couldn't exactly see what was in front of me at first, until I looked forward. It was a mirror. The single mirror's reflection of me. I couldn't think of a reason at first for why the room was there and only having a single mirror. But there was a reason behind it, and I walked closer to it to see if there were any traps like the other two. Or if it would shatter like the other books. Or the clocks. Like me. Then I realised it. Right in front of the mirror. I was shattered. After the events of Veritas, Matthew, Roxy and Julia. That was the point where I was shattered into a million pieces. Maybe that was it. Maybe that was the point behind all of this. To admit to myself in my mind that I was the one shattered. I thought about it. I'm making sure the memory was in my head. And I waited a couple of seconds, hoping that the loop would stop. The console would stop exploding and everything would go back to the way it all was before all of this started. Except it didn't happen. I was still stuck there. Seconds later. Perhaps that wasn't it. Perhaps I had to find a different answer somewhere else. I decided to find this answer, and I had to walk to the next door. So I did. I opened the door. And then everything happened. I had opened the door that led to the corridor. It had seemed like the explosion from the console had followed me like a mist in a graveyard in the dead of night so that's where i was back to the start it seemed the loop it had actually been a while since i'd actually been in it but by this point i'd just given up there was not much i could change after that so i decided after the loop i was just going to sit down in a chair and read I could try again, beat the loop, and make it to the Eye of Harmony chamber, but there was no point, because I would, somehow, just end up back here. So, just sit and read. That sounded like a good plan in my head. And so, that's what I did. I just got a book out sat down in my chair and read. My eyes were now sprawling through the words as I read and read further into the book, as I just ignored the background. It was great that for once, finally, nothing was happening and I could finally have a break. I smiled at that thought as I turned the page of the book. But then, Something happened. The screen turned itself on. Which was impossible. With the power being off, it shouldn't have been on. But if this was a cry for attention, it got me interested. So what did it say? It flickered with one big word. Talk. But talk about what? About me? To you? The word disappeared, and I sighed. This was her plan all along. To keep me in check after all the stuff I said about not being the doctor anymore. Alright. If you want me to talk, then here I am. Talking at last. I uttered to the console. I wondered at that very moment if she'd felt all the pain I had every time I'd been through these time loops. This idea of yours, old girl. The time loop. It was inventive. I will give you that. You wanted to keep me in here so that I would talk to you for once. I think it agreed. I didn't hear a response. But I knew she could hear me. Deep down. 
but you do realize that you didn't need all of this pomp and circumstance to get my attention, right? This was true. There were easier ways of getting my attention, which didn't revolve around keeping me here. You could have just asked, and I would have talked, I said in a softer tone. But my decision is right. I can't be the doctor. I mean, look at all the destruction I caused by just standing there, in the background. I'm not even supposed to be the doctor. That was true, yet no one these days tends to remember that. So why does everyone, including you, want me as the doctor? Is it for fun? Is it for thrills? Is it for you? Or is it for me? Is it because you wanted to avoid me going down a path where the doctor would no longer exist? Because I wanted to stop? You do know that wouldn't happen. Someday, even if I did disappear, I would change at some point and I would become the doctor again. I think, for now, I need this break. I need this time away from the responsibilities to make sure that I'm okay before coming back. I started to say with the relief of letting things out finally. I need to make sure that I am well enough to return. I don't want to come back and damage anything on my return, such as myself or you. Do you accept what I'm saying? I could hear the faint hum of the rotor. She agreed, but she wasn't done yet. There was still something that needed to be resolved. And it did, as the TARDIS blew up yet again. However, this time, I wasn't feeling the sense of failure. This time, it was a sense that everything was back. Back to normality. Only the loop had to reset. And this time, I was ready. The doors were opened again, for the last time. I walked over to the console. The room, in the brightly dim light, was warm as it always was. The console, in all of its majesty. There, and waiting for me to help it. I did what I always did in the loops. I operated the controls, put in the coordinates, Everything was perfect. Now, I had to use the handbrake. And I hoped everything would go well. I used it. I took a couple of seconds to wait. But the engines roared to life. It seemed everything was ready to go and I was finally ready to leave. That was until the engines stopped again. I was a little worried. Was this another part of the loop? A final extra step? But then, it took me a few seconds to realize that all I needed to do was hit the console. And the engines came back to life. Finally, we were away, into the further reaches of space. As I said before, back to normality at last. With the old girl working properly, I could finally sigh with relief to know that everything was back to normal. So I left the room to walk through the corridors. Not for any particular reason, I just thought it would be nice if I wasn't in the room again, to allow us both some space and time. A few hours later, I walked back in. At this point, I was much more relaxed. And when I wanted to be more relaxed, I usually stayed in the console room. Usually in my chair, with a cup of brewed tea and a good book. But today, I couldn't. Today, a lot of things were different. And I think it was a stepping stone to something later. So I stepped in, stood in the room and said something. I know I'm still not the doctor, but I think about the events of today. 
everything you've done is going to get me one step closer. However, I do hope this doesn't happen again, and when I return, it will be by my own measures. The console hummed in agreement as I stayed, standing there. Things weren't going to be ready for a long time. But I hoped that I was sure that this would be the start of the return of the Doctor. <laughs>